Well, hello, everyone. I know you might be listening on the radio, but you also might be watching on YouTube or you might be listening to the Safe Money Radio podcast with Brad Pistol. So whichever way you're joining us today, radio, podcast or online with YouTube, we have a very special guest today. In fact, my favorite guest of all time. That's why we have him on so often. But today, America's IRA expert Ed Slot is with us. Ed, thank you so much for joining us again. Great to be back with you all the time. Always great info on this program. Yes, yeah, so it, this is what's really special. Today, uh, we are actually going to be talking about something that happened while you were sleeping. Uh, <laughs> during, during the Christmas break, when all the snow was hitting, the nationwide blizzards, uh, you maybe had a canceled flight and were stuck somewhere. And while that was all going on, uh, we had a little something happen. Uh, Ed, what happened there at the end of December in 2022? Well, Congress wanted to run home for Christmas, but they got there too late. And uh, <laughs> when the smoke cleared... On December 29th, I think that's the latest possible date we've ever seen a tax bill that became effective in a few days uh, be enacted. So Congress cleared it just before Christmas and the president signed it, uh, actually had the bill shipped to him on a plane. <laughs> really? <laughs> if you remember, on December 29th. So it's law, secure 2.0. This is the follow-up to the, the, the big SECURE Act from three years earlier, which was also signed into law late in December, December 20. That's December right. 20, uh, tw December 20th, 20, 2019. And would you say, Ed, for the average consumer, I know in part two, we're going to get into some of these changes, but would you say for the average consumer who's working every day, raising a family, going to ball games, going to church, giving to charities, would you say these changes are just easy, random stuff for them to keep up with? Uh, not really. There's there's literally hundreds of them. But Secure 2.0, uh, I don't think lives up to the hype. You saw all the, uh, the landmark legislation and Congress patting themselves on the back because they did anything. They pat themselves on the back if they could walk and chew gum. You know, I mean, uh, right. But it wasn't the or, or anything earth shattering like Secure was. Secure was transformational. It was a game changer. It ended the planning we all did for IRAs. It ended the, the stretch IRA, created new opportunities, created Absolutely. this 10-year snafu for beneficiaries. But Secure, too, just kind of picked up, uh, trimmed around the edges. But there are a few things that people should know about, and it's effective now. And that's the other thing with this uh, Secure 2.0. Congress, you know, nobody, what do they say about laws being made, like watching sausages being made, right? Yeah. I don't want to see it, but with all yeah. the gimmickry and the budgets, remember, they have to make it work. I don't know why they always say that. They have to make it work, fit into the budget. They're, they're over 30 trillion in debt. All of a sudden, they're worried about the budget, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. So Last time. The problem is with Secure 2.0, the effective dates are all over the place. Yeah. Normally, you know, years ago when we had a tax law, when the president signed it into law, it was effective. Everything. The last few years of all the budget gimmicks, well, some were 10 years later, three years later, two years later, some whenever we feel like it, you know, it's all over the place. So certain certain uh, laws this is a law provisions are effective now certain provisions are effective maybe next year some in 10 years all right the budget gimmicky so you have to know which apply to you luckily they have you brad <laughs> well and that's what i want to get into in our next segment is we're going to talk about some of these rules that apply right now that were changes especially for people who were 72 thinking something was about to change or happen and now it's not uh and those future laws which are kind of kind of strange but guys if you don't already know and you know i talk about it all the time i have it on my podcast all the time here's the guy we're talking to today ed slot here's his newest book and uh just phenomenal information i actually use this all the time to write shows to to give information to you the new retirement savings time bomb how to avoid finance or how to take financial control avoid unnecessary taxes and combat the latest threats to your retirement savings from America's IRA expert. That's who's on our show as our guest today. And when we come back from the break, 
We're going to jump into some of the Secure Act 2.0 changes that are going to affect you, all of our listeners and our viewers. So just keep this in mind. If this is the first time you've ever tuned in, well, welcome to the show. I know many of you have been listening for 14 years now. That's pretty crazy to me. But you can call into our show anytime, 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. I will show you how you can get a free copy of Ed's book. I'll give it to you and actually have a bunch of them that are signed while they last. You can also get a copy of my book, Bulletproof, the Safe and Secure Retirement Income Plan. And the foreword was written by our our guest today, Ed Slot. So we're going to go to a break. Stay with us. If you want our free information, just call in 866-780-7233. There's someone standing by right now to take your call. Now, if you were with us before the break, you know we have on our show Ed Slot, our guest, America's IRA expert. And today we're talking about the SECURE Act 2.0 that was actually signed into law while you were sleeping on December the 29th, 2022. So, Ed, I want to talk about a few of the changes. I know there were like changes to QCDs. There were changes to RMDs. There were changes to Roths. There's like 90 different changes, I know. But <laughs> yeah. Let's jump into the big one I think affects most of our listeners, or it's going to affect all of them at some point. Let's talk about RMDs because it's so confusing. We have our 70 and a half rule. We have our 72 rule. Then I'll let you take it from there, and let's talk about some of these changes. All right. Yeah, you started out. It was 70 and a half for years and years. And I always hated that because it was so confusing to people. Nobody yes. knew what a am I 70? Do I look up 71? When am I 70 and a half? Which chart do I use? So right. one of the great things with the original Secure Act, they finally got rid of that half year. That was one of the best changes. And they made it just 72. But there yes. was even confusion with their transition. Who moves from 70 and a half to 72? Well, now they raised it again in Secure 2.0 to age 73. Now, there again, there will be confusion. Who gets to use age 73? In other words, wait one more year. Yeah. Well, anybody who turns 72 in 2023 or later. So if you were already taking under the 70 and a half or age 72, you just continue. You don't right. get to stop. You know, there's no stopping with R&Ds. Once yeah. you start, uh, you know, that's it. You're over the cliff. I mean, there's no going back. Yeah. But uh, the, the best way to put it, because people will be confused. So we did it by birth years. Uh, you're going to see that we've given you some charts as one of our elite advisors. So you have some nice tools to share with your listeners and your clients. Uh, so anybody born between 1951 and 1959, rather than going through all the rules, I think, Brad, most people know when they were born, at least yeah. they're here. So right. that's an easy way. If 51 to 59, you get to use age 73. Perfect. Uh, that's good in a couple of ways. Uh, Congress loves raising the RMD age because they know people like it. And everybody's, yeah. oh, good, I can put it off, put my RMD. And that stands for required minimum distribution, when you must start going the other way and start taking that money out. So they delayed it one year. So that gives you one more year of tax freedom, which you know, Brad, I love tax freedom. Absolutely. Here to do whatever you want before you're forced to take that money out. For example, like another year to do Roth conversions. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that once RMDs start, you can't convert anymore. It just becomes more expensive because right. once you're into required RMDs, you first must take that amount and that amount cannot, cannot be converted to a Roth. So you first have to pay tax on that amount and it can't be converted. Once you satisfy that amount, then any part of the balance can be converted for the rest of the year, but it costs more. So you have one more year maybe to get in some Roth conversions. That's yeah. uh, probably the best part of raising the age because you have more freedom. But there's a uh, another part that I'm not so happy about. People love to procrastinate. They love sure. to especially put off paying taxes as long as they can. That's yeah. how we were all trained. Defer, right. defer, put it off, you know? But I'm not so sure that's a good move 
for most people. Now, you have two classes of people here, Brad. Some people that the RMD means nothing because they take more than they need anyway because they need the money. Right. So you know, by IRS's own numbers, that's 80% of the people. So telling people they can wait and take later doesn't help somebody who needs, is gonna take it now anyway. So 80% yeah. of the people are unaffected by this because they're gonna take what they need. Uh, now, you know, throw out this other number though. There's a fourth number for the RMDH that doesn't take effect oh, yeah, until okay. 2033. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I already saw headlines that are wrong. So, okay. Misleading, I shouldn't say wrong. It, it's meant to like clickbait to get your attention. RMDH raised to 75. That doesn't happen for 10 years. <laughs> Half the people that are affected be dead by then. So, and who knows how many laws will be made between now and 10 years from now. So forget Absolutely. 75, how Congress threw that in there so people could write about it and say, oh, look, we're putting it off till 75. That doesn't happen till 2033, 10 years from now. So forget age 75. But there's a darker side of raising the RMD age, because like I said, we love to put off paying taxes as, as long as we can. But now that the original secure, uh, remember I said it did away with the stretch, gave most beneficiaries a 10 year rule. We know there's an end date, 10 years after death, when all of this money must come out. That's right. If you are going to shorten the window where all this money has to come out, that may cause people, uh, the IRA owners and their beneficiaries, to pay a lot more tax because more has to come out in a shorter time. You may want to change that M in RMD. Uh, the M stands for minimum, required minimum distribution, but it doesn't mean maximum. You may want to even start earlier, get Roth conversions in before RMDs and take advantage, take more than you need and stay in these huge low tax brackets we have now and take it out over a longer period of time where you and your beneficiaries will end up paying less tax. Very good. Now, I'm going to pivot to something. And, and those of you that are listening, this is why I love Ed and why I love interviewing and talking with him. He never has any clue what I'm going to ask him. He doesn't want to know. I don't this want stuff, to know. It, this stuff isn't scripted. So he said something a minute ago that's very important, and this is why I want to spend a couple of extra minutes on it in this segment, and that wasn't planned. But here's the thing. Ed, you said you you cannot convert an RMD, and something that happens all the time. I can, I can think of one person specifically who called me and became a new client, and he said, yeah, whenever I take my RMD, I roll it over into another IRA. And I'm like, you, you do you do what? You he said, yeah, I do. I said, well, you can't do that. Oh, yeah, I've been doing it for years. My other advisor never told me any different. Ed, why is it important to pay attention? To clarify two things. You can't roll over an RMD to another IRA, and you can't convert an RMD to a Roth. Just explain that real quick. Same rule. Rolling okay. over uh, uh, is the same thing. That's what a conversion is. It's essentially a rollover from an IRA to a Roth, but a taxable yes. rollover. The reason that was put in the law, and that's been in the law for, for decades, as it it goes against the whole idea of forcing people to take their money out rmds because if you could take your money out and put it back in it'll <laughs> first of all why would you do that and, and end up paying tax and there's a penalty for doing that because if you right. do that is a six percent excess contribution penalty you could be subject to absolutely so friends make sure that you're working with someone who is a qualified financial professional. Just because this guy's advisor told him it was okay or didn't tell him not to doesn't mean it's okay. So that's why I've been in the Ed Slot Advisor Group, the Elite IRA Advisor Group. I mean, I've been a Master Elite Advisor for years and years and years. Actually, I was in Group 10, Ed. I don't know what we're up to now, probably close to you're 40. You're probably in the group over 10 years, well over 10 years. Yeah. I, I, you're somewhere around there. 13. I, people know that's an advanced education group that has nothing to do with investments this is about keeping more of your hard-earned money most advisors don't have that knowledge they can help you make a lot that's great but when it comes to IRA money which is has not yet been taxed generally it's what you keep that counts that will determine your standard of living in retirement that's why Brad and our other elite advisors, only about 500 throughout the whole country, have this level of knowledge. 
Friends, that's right. That's why uh, I say all the time on the show, it's not what you make. It's what you keep that counts. And now you know where I get it from. It's from Ed. Almost all my sayings are. So if you want to call in and get our free information, just call us at 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. You can always go to our podcast. If you missed any part of the show or if you tuned in and you heard just a minute or two of this and you're like, wait, whoa, what was all that? Just go to our podcast. You can find it on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. It's Safe Money Radio with Brad Pistole. And you can call in anytime for a free copy of my book or Ed's recent book, uh, 866-780-7233. And there's someone standing by right now to take your call. Now, Ed, before the break, we were talking about RMDs and the 70 and a half moved to 72 and then it moved to 73. And and now they're saying that there'll be one at 75 that's in 2033. Confusing. But let's go to another one that can be confusing because even though I teach my clients all the time with the right information, they still confuse this. I'll be in a meeting doing an annual review and a client will say, I took my QCD. And I'll mean I'll say, you mean your RMD? You took your RMD. No, I, I took my QCD RMD. They will say my QCD RMD. I'll say, no, those are two completely different things. A a required minimum distribution and a qualified charitable distribution are different. Uh, I do understand where they get confused, but they mean they took their RMD and gave it as a QCD to their charity. And so explain for a minute what a QCD is and what changed in the Secure Act 2.0 regarding QCDs. All right, the QCD, a qualified charitable distribution, came out years ago and it's been made permanent. I think it's one of the best provisions in the tax code as far as saving money. Let's go back and I'll tell you why. People give to charity all the time. I mean, as a tax preparer for 40 years, I don't think I've ever met anyone who has not given to charity. At least that's what they tell me when they come in for their tax. Do you give to charity? Oh yeah, I give a lot. Oh, I give, give, give. So according to my, you know, unofficial survey, 110% of the people give, okay? Yes, yes. 150% probably of what they, you know. Anyway. uh, (laughs) They give it all away. I give, give, give. Uh, Here's the thing. Ever since the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act made major changes, uh, and I always like when they say we cut your taxes, you know, whenever they give, here's a little tip. I've told you this before, Brad. Whenever Congress names a law, you can almost always bet whatever name they give it, it will do exactly the opposite. All right. (laughs) When I saw Secure, I said, hold on to your wallets. And sure enough, so the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act actually raised taxes for some people by taking away deductions. The charitable deduction was one of them that got caught in the crosshairs. It it didn't go away, but most people now get no, receive no tax benefit for making charitable contributions because the other good part about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, they raise substantially the standard deduction. So now, according to IRS numbers, over 90, 90, over 90% of the people take a standard deduction. So they don't mm. itemize, so they get no benefit, tax benefit. They get a great benefit of giving because uh, that's why they give to help people, but they get no tax benefit. The cha- qualified charitable distribution, the QCD, is a provision that brings back that benefit. The only negative about it, it doesn't apply to enough people. It only applies to a certain group. And that group is IRA owners. So if you have an IRA, not a 401k, IRA owners or IRA beneficiaries who are 70 and a half years old or older. Now don't get confused. We just did this whole thing on RMDs. The age went from 70 and a half to 72 and now 73. But in all of those bills, the secure and secure 2.0, the QCD age was left at the old 70 and a half. So it only applies if you're 70 and a half and you must be 70 and a half. For example, if you're turning 70 and a half tomorrow, you don't qualify today. You must actually be 70 and a half. And here's the deal. You make charitable contributions. If you do it from your IRA, a direct transfer from your IRA to a qualified charity, church, alma mater, wherever you like to give a certain cause, qualified charity, you can do a direct transfer 
it's it's a distribution from your IRA, but it doesn't count as income. So you're getting that money out at 0% tax rate, and it can satisfy your RMD if you're subject to RMDs. This is one of the best provisions because you're not getting an itemized deduction. You can't get both, that's double dipping, but you're getting better, an exclusion from income. It lowers your income, it lowers the key number on your tax return, adjusted gross income agi that's the key number that determines all the tax benefits credits deductions taxation or social security those irma medicare charges everything and all because you're giving to charity now i'm not saying give all your money to charity i never say that i mean if you know for tax reasons if you want to do that if you're doing it just for tax reasons yeah give all your money away you'll never pay taxes that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is do the giving, if you qualify, IRA owners over 70 and a half, if you qualify uh, and you do the giving you were already doing, but get a tax benefit for it. Why not? Absolutely. So that's that's the number one thing I ask clients, Ed. If they come into my office and they're above the age of 70 and a half, I will ask them, are you charitably inclined? And they may think that's kind of out of order. Like, why are you asking me that? Well, most people in this part of the world say, yes, absolutely. Give to my church all the time. Are you using a QCD? Deer in the headlights. What's a QCD? They've had an advisor for years, have no clue what a QCD is, have never been talked to about a QCD. It's a big, big deal. So just briefly, just how did the Secure Act 2.0 change QCDs? What, what did well, they do with it? I don't think there were big changes, but the limit yeah. was an annual limit of $100,000 per person per year. I think that's enough to give. I mean, most sure. people don't give that much to charity. Most people don't even make that much. So I think right. the limit was good enough as it is, but apparently some lobbyists, I guess, <laughs> one of the higher charitable group. So starting uh, next year, the $100,000 will go up to, based on inflation, you know, index for inflation. So it can go up a few thousand each year. Plus, if you want to use charitable remainder trusts and charitable gift annuities, you can do up to 50000 That was added. That was not allowed before. But right. still, I don't think most people are going to use that. There are some rules around that. It has to be a separate trust. I don't think people are going to go through the time and expense of set, setting up a separate trust just for $50,000. Usually these vehicles are set up for much larger amounts. So, But they yeah. put that in there. But you still cannot use it for donor advised funds and private foundations. It's meant really for direct transfers from your IRA to a charity. And the key to getting the tax break is to do it early in the year, especially if you're subject to RMDs. For example, let's say your RMD for 2023 is 5,000 and you normally give 5,000, just to make the example easy. Do this QCD first for 5,000 direct transfer from your IRA to the charity and you won't even have to take your RMD. It satisfies that lowering your income. It's it's a big, big deal. If you don't know that one trick and tip, then this is a big deal. So make sure that if you're above the age of 70 and a half and you have qualified funds, you're making use of QCDs if you give to charities. And if not, maybe a good reason for you to start doing so. So especially if you don't need the taxable income. So folks, if you're listening with us today or if you're watching online and you want more information about this kind of stuff that's all in Ed's book, just call us at 866-780-SAFE, 866-780-7233. Ask for a free copy of Ed's book. Ask for a copy of Bulletproof, the Safe and Secure Retirement Income Plan. Very critical information to have after we came off of a year like 2022. How much is your retirement account down? You need to learn how to keep your money safe. Remember, it's not what you make. It's what you keep that counts. So call us anytime at 866-780-7233. And after this break, we'll be back with IRA expert Ed Slot. Call us anytime. Our phones are answered 24-7-866-780-7233. One thing with Ed. So, Ed, I know that you've been on PBS for forever it's been a long time i've been listening for years and so your most recent show ed slots retirement freedom and i talk to clients about this all the time but i know we've done shows about this we did last year when i had you on as a guest uh, we talked about freedom from taxes freedom from worry freedom from risk freedom from bad advice let's let's talk for just a minute about what happened in 2023 because 
or 2022, sorry. A lot of different things happened in 2022, but at least two of these four, I actually think all four of these are covered in what happened in 2022 because um, the market went down all across the board, bonds, stocks, mutual funds, unless it was something that was insured and protected, which is what we talk about on this show, things like annuities and specialized types of life insurance, the right kind. Um, and so worry and risk. In 2022, I say a lot of times, boy, if you retired, timing's everything. Ed will say, uh, I don't even know if he remember when he said it, but I wrote it down the day I was there, and I say it all the time. Do you know what the difference is between lettuce and garbage? It's timing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. So if you retired on December the 31st, 2021, and you thought, here comes my wonderful retirement, and all your money is in a brokerage account, and then boom, the clock strikes 12.01, and 2022 starts, and the market's down 20, 25, 30%. That that is that timing is is critically important because it's really bad to go through losses the five years before you retire and the five years right after you retire. So let's talk about worry and risk. Um, Ed, why did you include worry and risk in your retirement freedom? Different things, and I believe people should be free from all of these things. I always believe that, and I've done uh, public television shows for 15 years, but it hit me for this show. You know, it's all about having freedom to do what you want when you want in retirement. People want to control their taxes, their level of worry, their level of risk. And what they didn't know is they need freedom from bad advice because it's everywhere. It's yes. everywhere. How do you know you're getting the right advice? Do you have an advisor like Brad here who is studying this full time, who goes to advanced training for, for years and years? I'm not talking about advisors that say, oh, I went to a seminar once. I almost even <laughs> opened the book. I'm talking <laughs> about you know, a commitment to education. You may have one chance to get this right. It took a lifetime to build a retirement account and you want control. You want assurances that that money will be there when you're ready to use it in retirement. The last thing you want to know is and when your time comes, that money has gone somewhere else to taxes or to worry about family members. That's where I put in life insurance because you want to make sure everything's taken care of. And just so you know, I'm a tax advisor. I don't sell stocks, bonds, funds, insurance, annuities. It's not about that stuff. It's about having the plans you want to be carried out the way they were intended to take care of yourself and family members. But I wanna focus on one of them since you brought up uh, uh, the year 2022. And that's- yeah. That happens every few years, or it's almost like every 10 years, you can almost guarantee it, these uh, these loss periods. But this, this started way before. I mean, go back to the 2008, 2009 crash. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. We had things called, let me see, subprime mortgages, collateralized debt obligations, credit default swaps. I don't really know what any of those things were or are. All I yeah. know is whoever had them lost their money. But it's not like losing money in stocks where you don't lose it until you sell and the stock market usually rebounds and corrects themselves. That money was gone. So yes. we had crypto and so it's a new iteration. That money's gone. The only people that ever made money on crypto were three kinds of people, athletes, entertainers, and celebrities who were getting paid to tout. And it's almost like the old pump and dump schemes. You know, Brad, uh, you saw all, I don't want to list names. You know who all the famous football players and celebrities and said, oh, yeah, I'm doing crypto. Yeah, crypto. Yeah, he already got paid or she already got paid. I don't even know if you saw, even during 2022, I, I, I will name one name because it's meaningless anyway. Even Kim Kardashian opened a hedge fund or some investment fund. Did you see that? And the minute yes. it happened, she got fined like a million dollars because she thought she could just advertise it on the, who knows, TikTok or wherever she was. You, you, this is not the place to make bets on your retirement money. This goes on and on. And it's, it's going to happen. I don't know what the next iteration was, but since Brad, it's football season, and I know you have a big team uh, in in the uh, in the running, right? That's right. Go, go Chiefs! All right, uh, but I'll give you a football analogy. You know who the 49ers are, right, Brad? Right. 
San Francisco. Yeah, I'm not talking about those 49ers. I'm talking yeah. about the ones they were named after, the 1849ers, the Gold Rush people. Now, I wasn't there at the time. I know I'm old, but I wasn't there at the time. Maybe Brad was, but I wasn't there at the time. But they had the same issues. Everybody went out west to, for gold. That was the new thing, the Gold Rush. You know who made the money in the gold rush? The people, just like the crypto people that had the infrastructure, the mm. people who sold the picks and shovels and tools and supplies and equipment. That's who made the money. The poor people lost their money chasing dreams and hope. You can't risk that with your retirement savings. You need certainty, you need stability. That's where guaranteed products like guaranteed income or guaranteed life insurance, I have that for myself. I don't wanna rely on the next fad. I don't know what's coming after crypto. They'll call it something else and the next celebrity will be out there saying, oh, I've got mine, you have to get yours. Yeah, because they already got theirs. <laughs> I mean, Boy, this is this is so good. Those of you that are listening right now, I want you to stay with us. We've got two more segments with that, and I want to pick up on this. And I want to talk about something because uh, my father passed away in 2022, and I know Ed's experienced this loss, losing his parents. And I want to pick up on why this stuff is important, uh, why it's important to have things that are guaranteed, and what you pass on when it comes to family planning, uh, income for a spouse or for for beneficiaries. So. Come back and join us if you're listening to us uh, on the radio and you want to call in and get more information about how to keep your money safe, how to do what America's IRA expert is talking about. The number is 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. Just call in and ask for a free financial consultation with me. I do not charge fees to meet with you. You can come in and, and get a copy of Ed's book, get a copy of my book. And we will talk about how to create a bulletproof plan around your retirement income so that you will never run out of money. You don't have to worry about the stock market. You will have guaranteed lifetime income for you and for your heirs. So the number again is 866-780-7233. And there's someone standing by right now to take your call. Now, Ed, before the break, we jumped into something that I, I'm passionate about. I know you're passionate about it also. We both own a lot of what we're talking about, but annuities and life insurance and things that protect you from all the ups and downs of the market. I mean, sure, we, we own stocks, bonds, mutual funds. The market's always going to do what it's going to do. It's going to go through its cycles. But there are some things that protect us from that. And those are things like certain types of guaranteed annuities that protect your principal, that have income riders that give you lifetime income, and also life insurance. And Here's where this, it's always meant a lot to me, but in this past year, in 2022, on August 29th, my father passed away. My father was a lifelong financial advisor, 52 years in the industry. And so he, he spent a lot of his career working as an assistant vice president for Merrill Lynch. He spent the last 14 years working with me. But the thing is, here's the thing. He had a lot of his money in the market in 01 and in 08 at Merrill Lynch, and it went you know, bye bye. It, it, it went down. And the key to that is it could have been okay if he would have been in his 30s, but he was 56 and 63 when 01 and 08 happened. That's a critical in uh, time. You don't really have the time to have it come back. So he did eventually in 2011. He actually rolled out all of his brokerage money. He purchased three fixed indexed annuities with income riders. There, there's multiple kinds he could have purchased, but he bought three of those. He also purchased a life insurance policy. Now, this is what's interesting, Ed. My father was a CLU. He sold tons of life insurance, but he didn't own any. He didn't own any permanent life insurance until I said, Dad, you really need to think about this. You're insurable. Your health is great. You need to think about mom in the future. So in 2011, he took out a life insurance policy on himself. And thank God he did. Because you you know what's coming, Ed. When he passed, my mother has had the beauty and the benefit of continuing those annuity payouts, continuing uh, to get the tax-free blessing from life insurance. It's what sustained her. So, Ed, I know we've talked about it before. Do you own annuities and life insurance? Absolutely. I mean, people say this stuff is junk. So. I don't Why? talk about anything that I don't do for myself. Well, sometimes I do because certain things don't apply to everybody. 
But when right. I talk about it, these are things I did for my own family. Let me start with my mother. Uh, my father died many years ago, and my mm -hmm. mother, uh, you know, lived well into her 90s, and she had a financial advisor. Not me. Again, I don't sell these products. I'm a tax advisor. But she had an advisor very much like Brad that saw, you know, Bev, you're going to go. She was like the energizer bunny, uh, you know. She... Uh, I, and the advisor knew that that's an important thing communicating with your clients which i know you do brad and you know your clients and he knew her and he said you know you're going to need income for a long time and she sold the house we grew up in the only house uh, she, they ever we ever had and uh put a lot of that money into i think four or five of these annuities and that was the greatest gift that she could have given us the greatest gift you can give your own family and yourself is the gift of financial security. To put That's it right. another way, the greatest gift you can kill, give your children is to not move in with them. <laughs> that's because boy, that's right. Financial security, and she had that. Now, my brother and sister are not financial people. They don't even realize the gift she gave them mm -hmm. because they never realized that you know, she had this money coming in and she used to talk about it all the time. She says, oh, these checks come in no matter. And they did. The checks come in, come in every month, no matter how old she got, no matter how sick she got, and no matter how the stock market performed, it didn't matter to her. In fact, even at the very end, I was visiting her at the hospital and I looked at a checking account and said, it's only like $600 left. So what do I care? I get new checks every month. She was- That's it. Good sailor, you know, and she was- you know, there's something about having guaranteed income. I can't, I don't know what it is. I just know people with guaranteed income, they're just happier people. They don't worry about all of these things. And I saw that in her. So to me, the financial security was unbelievable. I followed her lead. You say, do I have annuities? Yes. The only thing better than guaranteed income for life is what I have. Do you want to have a commercial here? Because now people want to know what is that? And I'll tell you right away. I hate when people do that. You know, you got to listen to the next. Come back after the break. <laughs> yeah. The only thing better than guaranteed income for life is what I have. What do you have, Ed? Well, if you've been listening to me, I like tax freedom too. The only thing better than guaranteed income for life is guaranteed tax free income for life. How did I do right. that? I followed my mother's lead. I have it in my IRA, but I don't have an IRA because I like Roth IRAs. I have my annuities in my Roth IRAs, not for everything. I still believe you want to get the upside of the market. But as a general rule, here's some of my rules of retirement. In retirement, income is always more important than savings because savings can run out. Yes, that's incredibly important. And my other rule for retirement, uh, as far as guaranteed income, my rule, everybody has different rules, but I bet you this would help most people. Basic monthly living expenses, whatever that number is for you. This is a number you must have money for basic monthly living expenses, whatever that number is for you. That should be secured with guaranteed income. You can't tell the electric company, oh, the market's down this month. Can I catch you next month? No, it doesn't work like that. You need that money coming in. So I believe that whatever your number is for basic monthly living expenses should be secured by guaranteed monthly income like my mother had. You never have to worry. Yes, the rest you can have in the market. And that's what I have in my own Roth IRA. I have market exposure, but I have guardrails against it with those annuities. I have a buffer, a protection against downside risk. And if I ever need that, I have guaranteed tax-free income for life. I'm hoping never to use that and to pass it on to my kids. Those of you that are listening right now, and if you've been listening since 2010, because I've been on, this is my 14th year, you may hear a broken record right now, and why? Because I own guaranteed tax-free lifetime income. I own six annuities. Three of those are held in Roth IRAs, and that's one of the things that can be so confusing to consumers. I will ask them where their IRA is, and they'll say, well, uh, it's my IRA, and they don't realize that you can hold an IRA in an annuity, that you can hold a Roth IRA in an annuity. which in other words, generates you can hold an annuity in an in IRA. Annuity. Exactly. The annuity and the IRA and then get the tax free income from that. So whether it's life insurance or Roth IRAs, 
These are our tax-free revenue streams. And if you want to learn more about how to do that, we talk about this very uh, specifically in Bulletproof with the forward by America's IRA expert, Ed Slott. He talks about the tax tumor that's inside the IRA. We go over that, and that tumor is going to have to be dealt with at some point. We take it out by converting to a Roth, and in your situation, that may or may not be the best thing to do, but we'll talk about that. You need to talk with someone who is a qualified financial professional, and this is what Ed does all day long, every day. That's why we have him on as a guest on our show regularly. And we're going to bring you back for one more segment because I want to push something that he's doing right now that I love, this podcast that's fantastic, So, where he's going to talk about a lot of things that you want to know about. So if you want any of our free information, if you want a copy of Bulletproof or if you want a copy of Ed's book, The New Retirement Savings Time Bomb, just give us a call. Request a free one-hour consultation. Come in. We'll give you a copy of the books absolutely free. Ed's books are even signed. So 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. And there's someone standing by right now to take your call. Well, Ed, we've enjoyed having you on the show today. It's always a blast. I love having you on. So talking about the Secure Act 2.0 and talking about the retirement freedom and talking about guaranteed income for life, and especially tax-free guaranteed income for life. But I want to talk about the great debate. So tell us, tell us about this new thing that started here, this podcast with Jeffrey. Uh, we're all ears. Well, Jeffrey Levine and I have worked together for many years, and now he's with uh, another firm of uh, – I don't. He has so many titles. I don't even know which is the right one. He's got he does. the Apple uh, uh, alphabet soup with Buckingham and all. He, he's brilliant. Uh, one of the the best young people I've seen really soak all this up and become one of the top advisors, literally in the country, in the things we're talking about protecting your retirement savings. So yes. Jeff actually came up with the idea. Said Ed, why don't you and I start a debate? on questions but it's a different kind of debate the only winner of the debate is the listener that's we right hit, you know we've fielded questions me for many decades him even for years as himself uh, oh we've heard all the questions should i take social security early should i uh, take retirement early should i do life insurance should i pay down my mortgage every question so we debate every issue. Now, we should I do a Roth conversion? Should I name a trust as a beneficiary? Uh, should I have long-term care insurance? Everything, every question. And we just pick, we actually toss a coin and pick the side. Now, uh, for example, I love Roth IRAs, but I may have gotten the side, what are the downsides? The point is there's pluses and minuses, benefits and drawbacks, pros and cons to every decision you make. So the point is, even if I would have done the other thing, there are there are pros and cons to each issue. And then you can match them up to your own personal facts and circumstances, but you have both sides of the coin. That's why we flip a coin. You have both sides of the coin so you can learn a lot and say, you know what? I was thinking of doing that, but you know, he made good points. Oh, the other guy made good points. You actually may have to have a list and say, you know, it makes you think. So there's no ulterior mode. Nobody's selling anything. It's just two advisors talking and hitting a question that we've both received from people like your listeners, uh, Brad, and people who watch you on YouTube. They And you've heard all the questions, too. But now we hit both sides, independent, objective, unbiased, just giving you the facts and help you be the winner of the debate to decide what's the best course of action for you. And you can rely on it because it's just... A debate. It's not uh, salesy or anything like that. There's nothing being sold. It's just to listen in and get a good perspective on what might be best for you for the key questions you have about retirement, Social Security, uh, insurance, things like we're talking about here, even reverse mortgages. We've done like 20 topics already. I can't even remember them all. It's so good. Um, just look at, should I own cryptocurrency in my retirement account? Should I use a Roth IRA versus a 529 plan for college? Should I use a Roth IRA or life insurance to provide a legacy? That was a great one. So, friends, I'll tell you this. My son and I, Hunter and I, we're both retirement income certified professionals through the American College. We have our ICP designation. I'm a CFF and a CAS. 
and and Hunter and I love the great retirement debate. We tune every week. We're like, have you listened to that one yet? Boy, this was so good. Begin because the winner is you, the consumer. You get to hear different sides. They literally flip a coin and don't know which side they're going to take. That's why you should have a qualified financial professional who knows both sides of things. But it's so good. So Ed, how can they how can they listen to the great retirement debate? Uh, just uh, you know what you got me there. I, I, that's beyond my pay grade. I know it's set up by just type in either Ed Google it. Or Levine, the great retirement debate. I think we have a dot com thing. You can find it. Yeah. Post a link. And absolutely again, all free, nothing, no salesy, but it gives you great information. And I tell you, this was Jeff's brainchild, but he really it's unbelievable. Uh, and, he, you know, we both talk about what questions did you get? You know, we'll meet like once a month. And so that's a good one. A lot of people, there's two sides to every almost there's almost no decision that's always one way. Although if you ask me with the Roth, I love the Roth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, those of you that are listening, that's exactly why we decided after 13 years to start putting Safe Money Radio on a podcast because so much of our listeners will call in and say, hey, I only heard 30 seconds of your show. Where can I find it? And we podcast things on our radio sites, but we now, it's simple. You can go to YouTube. You can go to Spotify. Spotify, you can go to Apple Podcast. Just type in Safe Money Radio with Brad Pistol, and you can subscribe, and you'll be able to see things like this. You can go to YouTube and watch this interview with America's IRA expert, Ed Slot. And there's a lot of information there, so you can watch it in segments, and you can pause it and rewind it. That's a great thing. You can do the same thing with the podcast or with the show, and that's why I'm blessed to, to have been friends with Ed for so long, to have his information constantly provided to you. If you've been to my office, you know it is an Ed Slot library. There's pictures of him in every single room. His books are everywhere. His DVDs are everywhere. They're on my desk. If you want a copy – you can go to Amazon to buy either one of our books. We're thankful for that. You can also contact us. We will get you uh, in front of the information that will change your life forever. It will teach you how to keep your money safe and out of the hands of the tax man. You don't want to give away unnecessary taxes and free money to, to, to Uncle Sam. So if you want to know more about what we do, just call us anytime. 866-780-SAFE. That's 866-780-7233. We'll give you a copy of Ed's book, The New Retirement Savings Time Bond. We'll give you a copy of Bulletproof, The Safe and Secure Retirement Income Plan, which will teach you how to protect your lifetime income and how to generate tax-free streams and revenues for the rest of your life. Ed, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll have you back on again. I know here in Literally just a few minutes, our entire Ed Slot group is going to be on training and drilling down about the Secure Act 2.0, about 500 of us. Yeah. That's why you want to work with a qualified financial professional who stays on top of this stuff all the time so they can get the information in your hands. So, Ed, thank you so much. I got to tell you, Brad, I was watching, you know, I finally got one of these smarter TVs. I didn't know how to do it, but my daughter was home, set everything up. And I couldn't believe I used to go on my computer to find these podcasts. And all of a sudden she put on YouTube and there in my den, the giant screen is Brad. I said, this is unbelievable. This is like watching a movie, you know, on the big screen. You got to watch it. If, if you're listening, uh, you want to go to YouTube. You know, it adds a lot more life to see me and Brad there. I was amazed. I was sitting there watching. It was great. Fantastic. Viewers, you know what to do. Go to YouTube, type in Brad Pistole or Safe Money Radio with Brad Pistole. You can see all my interviews with Ed's that have been taking place for years now. Call us anytime, 866-780-SAFE, 866-780-7233. It's not what you make. It's what you keep that counts. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, Ed. Thanks.